Both girls were raised in the church, so naturally God was bound to come up in their discussion. Hi friends, it's Brittany Valadez for BravelyDaily.com. Thanks for hanging out with me today, friends. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and please subscribe. Also hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload a new video. It also helps this video get out to people who may want to know about this topic as well. Miley Cyrus created a daily Instagram talk show, Bright Minded, which features a multiple celebrity guest tuning in to chat with a 27 year old singer five days a week. In a recent episode, Miley brought on Hailey Bieber, yes, the famous wife of arguably the biggest male pop star in the world. Justin Bieber. Okay, probably the biggest male pop star in the world. In this video, we're gonna discuss specific parts of their chat, including Haley's comments on community and one's own relationship with Jesus, as well as homosexuality and the church. Both women grew up in an evangelical Christian household as Haley is the daughter of Christian actor Stephen Baldwin, while Miley's dad is country singer Billy Ray Cyrus. Now, during their chat, Miley asked Haley how she stays bright in dark times, to which the social media influencer and model, 23, discussed the importance of having, quote, the support of other people, AKA a solid community. I'm super open and vocal about being raised in church. And I think there's a difference between being raised in church and then being an adult and having your own relationship with God and having your own relationship with Jesus and spirituality, because what my relationship was with faith getting raised that way is completely different than it is for me in my own journey as an adult. So I love that. I feel like I feel like I found my footing with, you know, spirituality and faith and church. And I, I found a church community that works for me where I feel supported and loved and accepted. And I think that that's so important. I think just having community in general, whether it's a church community, whether it's a sports team community, whether it's like a book club community or any type of like supporting community where it feels like a core group that you, you feel like you can rely on and you can go there and there's no judgment. It's just acceptance and love and it's just pure and you feel that when you're there. I think that that's really, really important. And I mean, for me, that that's church and that's God and that's faith and that's that, but that may not be that for everyone. Now to Haley's credit, she says that she does not shy away from having been raised in the church and she shouldn't. Jesus died for you and I. And yes, I have videos that show evidential support for that, which I will put in the description box below and probably cards above. Remember, Christianity is not blind faith, it's evidential. Now having a true solid foundation in Christ gives you guidance as you make decisions in life. And honestly, it allows the Holy Spirit to convict you even if you're not trying to step outside of God's truth and make your quote, own truth. By the way, the truth is a truth, not my truth or your truth. It's just one truth, the truth. Now that that's clear, moving forward. Haley is also correct as she stressed the importance of community. We aren't called to do life alone. Even at the very beginning, God didn't make Adam alone. So he made us, the woman. In Genesis 2.18, it says, quote, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Besides that, Christ calls believers the church. Now, according to gotquestions.org, the word church is a translation of the Greek word ekklesia, which is defined as an assembly or called out ones. Those of us who are Christians, the church, are the body of Christ and God is the head of us, the church. In Matthew 18, 15 through 19, the Bible talks about the proper steps to dealing with sin in the church, which involves one or two others and possibly the entire church. Additionally, Christ said that when two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. Again, having a solid godly friend is one way we grow, left to ourselves and we'll destroy ourselves. So you get my point. We're not meant to be alone. While having a personal relationship with God is necessary for salvation, you can't get into heaven because you were raised Christian or because a friend or your family is saved. Hello, step right up with your Disney family, fast pass to heaven. No, we need a strong support system around us to help us grow in our walk with God and also to call us out when we're backsliding and provide help when such happens. And believe me, we are humans, it's gonna happen a lot. 
When Haley discussed community, she said that any type of community where you can feel, quote, no judgment, but quote, acceptance and love is key. She is also partially right in that we all want to be able to be around others who won't pass judgment. And we'd love for people to accept and love us, flaws and all. In fact, we need that. We want to be able to tell them everything on our hearts, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But at the same time, we as believers want, and if we don't want, we need fellow believers to pray for us, love us, and encourage us, but also humbly call us out when we are wrong and help us walk through it. Now, Haley ended by saying that her community is church. Here's what she said. And I mean, for me, that that's church and that's God and that's faith and that's that, but that may not be that for everyone. I understand Haley because I had her understanding of Christianity. I knew in my heart that it was true, but I didn't know there was evidence to back up what I believed. So I would say, well, this is what I believe, but it's okay if you don't. You know, we all have different beliefs. And again, yes, it's true that we all believe different things, but just because one believes something is right, doesn't make it right. <laughs> I mean, I can believe that I'm a blonde haired, blue eyed girl, but I'm obviously not. And it doesn't change the truth. You know, I was trying to be nice and compassionate and we always should be, but honestly, I just wasn't aware that there was evidence behind my strong belief in Christianity and I didn't know that I could back it up. But there is, and that's why I make these videos. Well, Miley applauded Haley and she spoke about her own upbringing and discussed how she left the church because of their stance on homosexuality. She also credited Haley for showing her that she can, quote, redesign her relationship with God, end quote, and make it, quote, more accepting to her. Here's the clip. I learned something so much from everyone that I've had on the show, and I think what I just took away from you is I'm allowed to decide what my relationship is with spirituality as an adult that doesn't have to be aligned with the way that it was when I was brought up, because I was also brought up in a church in Tennessee at a time, you know, in the 90s. So it was a less accepting time. Yeah, and, exactly. Um, <laughs> I was a less accepting time of like, I had some gay friends in school that the reason I kind of left my church was because they weren't being accepted. They were being sent to conversion therapies. And I had a really hard time with that. And I had a hard time with it as me finding my sexuality too. So I think now you telling me that I'm allowed to redesign my relationship with God as an adult and make it how it feels most accepting to me would make me feel so less turned off by spirituality. Churches, you know, the good godly ones, and no, I'm not talking about that psycho Westboro Baptist Church. It's not a church of God. I'm just letting you know because anybody can claim to be anything nowadays. Well, churches are come as you are. I mean, have you seen our pastors? They have tattoos and they wear skinny jeans. Whoa. Okay, on a serious note, when I think of church, I truly think of it as a hospital for the sick. And that includes the pastor too. But friends, have you seen the list of what it takes to be a pastor? It's long. Because God expects pastors to live a holy life. They are leading his sheep and their job is to teach the word of God, including all the parts we don't wanna hear. For the full list, check out 1 Timothy 3 and Titus 1. Now, will pastors be perfect? No, of course not. But they really, really have to try and live honorably. I don't know Miley's personal story, but I want to address some concerns she has. Friends, a pastor's job, or any believer really, is to love others and of course help bring them to Christ. Christ called us to go into all the world and preach the gospel in Mark 16, 15, and to love one another in John 13, 34. When we do, Jesus says in the verse following that others will know that we are one of his disciples. Pastors, like doctors, often tell us things that we don't want to hear. It may make us feel uncomfortable, it can scare us, and the truth can sometimes do both. But just like doctors, pastors tell us what we need to know. Because while doctors are saving earthly bodies, loving pastors are saving souls. And when you love or care about someone, or both, you do what you can to save them. Now in regards to homosexuality, it's not the sin of all sins. It is a sin like everything else. But for this particular video, we are singling it out at the moment since that is what Miley talked about particularly. Just making that clear. I can and most likely will make a separate video or videos on homosexuality in the future, but I will address things generally here. Now in the Bible, homosexuality is mentioned several times throughout both the Old and New Testament. 
and in both, homosexuality is referenced as one of many sexual sins. We are absolutely called to love those who are struggling with their sexuality and to be nothing but kind and compassionate towards those who identify as LGBTQ. Many have been questioning their sexuality since grade school and it has been a lifelong battle for them. At the same time, we must share the truth in love. And when you truly love and care for someone, you share the truth, no matter what it is. And since God is real, Jesus lived, died, and rose again for us, and the Bible is true, we must follow what it says. And a pastor's job is to study the word and share it. Another topic Miley mentioned is conversion therapy. When we look at conversion therapy, we have to realize what we're saying. It's like calling someone who doesn't agree with homosexuality a homophobe. A phobe, taken from phobia, is a fear. And not agreeing with something is not the same as fearing it. But it's the word that people throw around, and no one wants to be called it. But it sticks and it falsely labels a person and can ruin their reputation. The term conversion therapy is somewhat similar. Let me explain. When conversion therapy was around in the 1940s, homosexual patients were often subject to extremely harmful treatments such as shock therapy. That was ugly, inhumane, vile, and should never be used again. But today, when conversion therapy is thrown around, people automatically associate it with the ugly and horrible treatment that happened in the 1940s, but there are several ministries who assist those who do not want to experience same-sex attraction, and they are often referred to or made fun of by being called ex-gay ministries or pray the gay away. One book that I read, in fact, it's honestly my favorite book on the entire spectrum of LGBTQ issues and topics, is Speaking of Homosexuality by advocate, speaker, and author Joe Dallas, who once identified as gay. The book deeply explains many issues and brings up popular questions and pushbacks along with well thought out and evidential answers. He says this, ministries, psychologists, or therapists offering help to repentant homosexuals are often described as doing reparative therapy or being ex-gay ministries. Reparative therapy is a secular psychoanalytic approach to treating homosexuality, largely developed by psychologist Dr. Joseph Nicolosi, based on Freudian and non-Freudian concepts. It has enjoyed popularity among Christians, conservative Jews, and Mormons. Ex-gay ministries, in contrast, are usually not clinical, offering instead combinations of education, mentoring, and group support for people who experience unwanted same-sex attraction. Now friends, if an adult is struggling with unwanted same-sex attraction and wants to seek support, or if anyone really, shouldn't they be offered advice or mentorship? I didn't say, crazy um, shock therapy or something that can harm them. But what if they want support and they want help and they're seeking help? Shouldn't they have that option? Well, Haley then responded to Miley's original comment. She said this. I, I believe that Jesus is about loving people no matter where they're at in life. So, yeah. you know, I, I've always had a hard time too with church making people feel excluded and not accepted and like they can't be a part of it because of what they believe in or who they love or who they don't love or whatever it may be. I, I just, I just don't believe that that's what God is about at all. The truth about Christianity is that it calls us to die to self. We are called to live for Jesus and living for Jesus will often have us go against what's popular or accepted by non-believers and definitely secular society. Jesus's whole ministry had him being a constant target for pious religious leaders of that day. He was even made fun of during his crucifixion. He was hated by many despite being sinless and despite being full of love. Now churches must always make its visitors feel welcomed and loved, but we must be careful we are accusing them of being unwelcoming or unaccepting simply because the preacher is doing essentially his job. And his job is sharing what the Bible says and doing it in a loving, truthful way. Sometimes we can also feel like we're not accepted because we're deep down feeling convicted. We have to disregard our feelings for a minute and consider that maybe we haven't actually been treated wrong, but that we are fighting an inner battle between flesh and soul. Now this same scenario is also truthful for those who aren't struggling with homosexuality. Do we feel like people aren't inviting? Maybe that others don't care about us or are singling us out? Or are we not doing what we can to get involved and meet others? 
This applies to anyone, especially those who want to accuse or assume that others are racist, sexist, or any other is really. Well, Miley went on to say that she felt so encouraged by her chat with Haley and that she can, quote, redesign her relationship with God and make it, quote, more accepting to her. It's important to have a personal relationship with God. And yes, as I mentioned before, we want and need to. But Miley appears to suggest that she can make a few edits to the Bible in order to fit her personal belief. We can't be a cafeteria Christian, meaning we pick and choose what we like or don't like and call it our own. But the thing is, when she does that, it's not Christianity she has anymore. She now has made her own faith. 